Hello and good morning, it's Phil Thatch and I'm in my rolling blind this morning. I've come to Dayton Park as recommended by a couple of friends of mine, Dan and Forrest, have both said, hey, you should go check out Dayton Park right now because there's lots of interesting birds, including in this low water level area, there's a bunch of Canada geese, but the interesting part is there's also quite a few great egret out here which is unusual for our area. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them right now. So I've brought a couple of uh, interesting cameras. I brought the Nikon Z50 and the new 180 to 600 lens. And I've also brought my Sony A6700 and the 200 to 600 lens. So I've got two APS-C 1.5 crop cameras and two 600 millimeter zoom lenses to see what I can do with these great egret. Here's a couple of shots of one of the great egret as it was relatively close to the side so I could get shots of it. This one's 496 millimeters with the Sony A6700 and the 200 to 600 and here's another one at 394 and they slowly stalk around or wade and that's why they call them wading birds and search for minnows to catch. I find myself reaching for the Sony instead of the Nikon just because the A6700 is so much better than the Z50. And I'm sure Nikon's gonna come out with a much better APS-C camera soon, hopefully. But uh, the lenses to me are about the same. I do enjoy the, the smoother roll of the, of the zoom feature of the Sony lens, it's easier to zoom. Now, if I want it to be at 600 all the time, I probably would prefer the Nikon in that situation because it's a firmer zoom and you're less likely to find yourself not at 600 millimeters. But with these larger birds, you're, you're kind of moving the zoom around and it's much easier to do with the Sony lens. Here's a great egret in that same location. I made this photograph with the Nikon Z50 and this one's 390 millimeters f6. Interestingly, the Sony lens is never at f6. It's only 5.6 or 6.3, but the Nikon lens has a part of its range where it is f6. I came across to the other side where the boat ramp is, and I brought the little Sony, and I'm sitting on the bank, and there's one great egret that's, I don't know how far it is from me. Oh, now there's two. Another one just flew up but I'm trying to get low angle shots of them here. I think I got one with a fish. I think it really helps to shoot from a lower angle when you're doing these wading birds. It makes the background look better a lot of times and it gets you down on the same level with them and it looks like you're one of their peers instead of looking down at them. And it's interesting to watch these great egret as they're fishing, searching around in all that messy water to find some prey. And eventually they will find some prey and you can watch them grab a fish. And here is one with a fish. It's got a nice little minnow in its mouth that it's going to enjoy. And as soon as it swallows that fish, it goes right back to hunting for some more. And then I moved to a different location and now the bird is also in a different location and it's on dry land or somewhat dry land. It used to be wet. This is one of my favorite pictures of the day. I just love all the layers of the background and the egret is relatively beautiful as well. And now here's another egret hunting. I like it looking up in this shot. I thought that was interesting looking. There's an extremely patient northern mockingbird in this little bush behind me. And I made a few shots of it with the Sony rig. And then I said, hey, this bird is not moving hardly at all. Let me see what I can do with the Nikon rig. And gosh, it's so much harder just to get the damn thing in focus with this Z50 but I did manage to get a shot. And gosh, I love this lens. I can't wait for a great camera to go with it. I made a mistake when I was shooting with the A6700. I had my shutter speed all the way up to 1 1,000th, which is much faster than I needed for this perched mockingbird. And that shutter speed led to higher ISOs than I would prefer. It still cleaned up fairly nicely in Topaz Denoise AI, but I would have liked it more if I had shot at maybe 1 400th or 1 320th. So I made three shots that I've shared with you with the A6700 and this is my favorite shot of the Northern Mockingbird. This one's with the Z50 and I'm further back and shooting at 600 millimeters than I were with those others and that's a compressed and bokefied cypress tree in the background. 
And on this one, I moved a little bit closer, 430 millimeters F6 on the 180 to 600 Nikon lens. Pretty chilly out here this morning. It's October 15th. And yesterday it was warm when I was at the football game. It was in the 70s and to this morning it's in the 50s. So I added another layer. Got the Z50 back out, made a few shots here and there. This domesticated duck lives in the area around Dayton Park year round and I thought it was interesting looking so I pointed the 180 to 600 at it and made a couple of shots with the Z50. One in the water and one as it climbed out of the water and went up the bank. And then I pointed the camera back towards the water and way across was this 600 millimeter shot I made of one of the great egret that has a minnow. And even further in the background is a bocafied great egret. I got back in the car and came to the other side of this little waterway here. And there was a kingfisher on a power line. And from the car, I made shots of it with both cameras. I'm going to show you two 600 millimeter shots with each camera. The first two are with the Sony A6700 and it's 26 megapixels. And the Nikon Z50 is the second two shots and it's 20.9 megapixels. Both of these shots or both of these pairs of shots are 100% crop. So you can see the Nikon, here it is. The bird is a little bit smaller on the screen because the camera is less resolution. Both cameras were 600 millimeters and again, these are 100% crops. It's always a thrill to get a picture of a kingfisher, even if it's on a power line. I love these little birds. I've driven halfway down this boat ramp. This is like for launching kayaks. There's a larger boat ramp over there on the other side. And I was looking at this egret, this great egret, and it had found a fish. And I went down this little concrete thing all the way down here so I could get nice and low and made some shots of the egret over in the distance, which you may be able to still see him over there in this shot. And he had a fish of some sort, and I had the Sony camera, and I made lots and lots of camera pictures, lots and lots of pictures with him playing with that fish. And he continued to play with it, and I was able to walk back up to the car, switch cameras, and come down and make several shots of the egret with the fish with the Nikon. And then I went back to the car just now and got my vlogging camera and it looks like he's finally eating the fish. Crazy. So it looks like the fish that this egret is playing with is a catfish of some sort, and he's jostling it around, and he did that for quite some time. These first four shots are ones that I made with the A6700, but look, he's holding it by its pectoral fins quite a bit of the time and flipping it around. And I almost wonder if it's trying to get rid of the venom that's in those pectoral fins before it swallows this fish. That's just a crazy idea I had, and I could be completely wrong. Some of you people who are scientists may be able to help me out with why is he playing around with this fish so long? Because usually they catch the fish, jostle it around, and immediately swallow it. Now the next picture coming up, these first four are all with the A6700, but this is my favorite shot, and it's the only one I'm sharing with you from the Z50. Definitely my, ba my favorite shot of the great egret with the catfish as it's juggling it. I left Dayton Park and came over to Blythe Ferry Western Ramp and not much going on here, but there is a great blue heron that hangs around here all the time. I think Dan has a name for it, but I don't remember what it is. And it was, it ha had landed on this little branch sticking up out of the lake and I climbed down these treacherous rocks to get a nice low angle. I only carried one camera and that was the A6700 and made a shot or two of the great blue heron there on that branch. Turned out pretty cool, I think. I was getting set up to make my shot and then the heron lost its balance and kind of put its wings up to catch its balance. And I got really lucky that this shot doesn't have motion blur because I made another mistake. My shutter speed this time was too low at 1 1 60th. I should have again been around 1 3 20th or 1 4 hundredth for this shot, but it did turn out pretty nice, I thought. It has been a pleasure shooting with these two amazing 200 and 180 to 600 millimeter lenses this morning, but I think I'm gonna call it a day and head on out of here. I appreciate you watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, take a moment and reach down, hit the thumbs up button. That would be greatly appreciated. You're gonna see some more stuff like this, Nikon, Sony, and Canon subscribe, hit the bell, and as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye from 
Blythe Ferry.